So to me, it's always great to start these uh, trainings with, with God's heart. And that really hopefully is going to really dictate our time. And everything we kind of do from this point on, we do because of God's heart, because of uh, really his heart for the world. And we want to come alongside that and, and identify that. And I appreciate even what Burke said about, we'll just pray, will, will we, uh, well, I, my prayer is always, God, break my heart to be like yours. I, you know, I don't want my heart, I want your heart. And I want to be like that. And so I, I encourage you guys, just as, as you prayed now, as you spoke to one another, make that even your prayer throughout all of boot camp, even all of Link. Uh, just, Lord, Lord, we want to be like you. We want to have your heart. We want to have your eyes uh, as, we, as we look at these things. So, um, so you're at boot camp, and this is our, uh, I've been telling people I'm going to do a training this week. Uh, going up to do, do some training, and I, I don't know how many people this is their first time at a boot camp training for Link, or even anything kind of similar to this, maybe. In the okay, good, a couple of you guys, great. Um, great, some of you might have seen some of the things we've done, some of it might be new, some might be done differently, some might be totally different, who knows. Um, but I, I think it's always good to remember, when we come, uh, we're, we're going to get some teaching, um, but a lot of what we're doing is training. So when I throw that out, what is the difference when I say training versus teaching? What comes to mind to you when we say those, those two things? What comes to mind when I say teaching? Like classroom, like classroom okay. Yeah, lecture type style, classroom. Learning. Learning, good. Hearing. Hearing, okay. Good. Yeah, when I, teaching, the main way I think of it is like info or knowledge. We're going to gain some info or we're going to learn, we're going to sit and listen and learn. Uh, a lot of times, uh, maybe on a typical Sunday type of service, church, you're going you're gonna to hear a teaching. You're going to sit and you're going to learn, gain some knowledge. And it's good. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to have teaching. We're going to learn some knowledge. But mostly what we want to pass along is what we're going to be doing is training. And we want to be training you. So when I say the word training, what comes to mind? Practice. Practice. Okay, good. The difference is one that has to do with the body, one has to do with the body. Okay, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, body in school, okay. What were you going to say, Nick? Practice. practice, good, yeah. Yeah, so what I want you to think of when you think of um, training, I want you to think of skills. Or I want you to think of practice. I like what you said there. Um, we're here, we're going to pass on skills to you guys, where teaching is more info or knowledge based. And they're both good, they both have places, but during this time, we want you to think of uh, the things we're sharing, the things we're putting up, uh, we're going to be talking about here, but mostly having you guys practice is, is skills to pass on to, to help really kind of put into practice we, well, things we see in Scripture, which we're going to go through the next couple of, uh, couple of days. We're going to look at Scripture and see God's plan to reach far, God's plan to reach the whole world, God's plan to reach the nations, all the families there. Um, and we're going to pass along a lot of skills, a lot of tools we're going to share with you. And uh, while we're here, a lot of these tools, we're not just going to, hey, we're going to show you the tool and move on, but we're going to be practicing these tools and getting what we like to call reps. We're going to get lots of reps in, lots of times to practice these tools um, so we can get them down. So we're comfortable, we're confident, and we're competent in each of these tools. It's kind of like, um, you think of any, any professional athlete. Uh, any professional athlete, if they're going to, to do well in their sport, they're going to practice a lot. Uh, you think about a basketball player. He's going to go and he's going to shoot hoops all day long. He's going to shoot, sit at the free throw line and shoot all day long. A hockey player is going to skate up and, sh and shoot at the net uh, hours and hours at a time. A uh, soccer player, the same thing. They're going to dribble up and down the field to practice. They're going to get lots of reps in. Just because they can do it well once doesn't mean they're done and they're going to be a professional uh, for the rest of their life. They're going to be the top of their game the rest of their life. Same is true for all of us here. We're going to, uh, during this time, do lots of reps of different tools that we're going to share with you. Now, some of you I know are already thinking, okay, Justin, I've been here. This is my third boot camp. Can't say more now because it's the only third time we've done it. Um, uh, or, or I've done this, this training many times, and some of you are in that case. I've done it a bunch, and, uh, and, and I'm in that category. I've done this a bunch of times. I've trained it a couple times. I've, I've been the guy in the audience who repped it. But every time I go to one of these trainings, I learn something different, and I get better at what God wants to do, or I, or I learn from somebody else. So, so if you're in that category, you're like, oh man, I've done a bunch of reps, I'm here, I'm one of the trainers, I don't need to worry about it. I want you to, to kind of throw that out and think, come as, hey, I'm a learner. I'm coming to learn and I'm gonna keep practicing these reps so I can be the best. Not for Justin, not for Burke, not for someone else here, but for God. I wanna be the best I can to put in the tools that we're learning, put in a way to, to, to come across and, and um, to reach the world with him. Great. Yeah, 
we're going to do all kinds of different skill tools um, and throughout the next three days a lot of tools are going to be like how to how to um, talk to people how to share the gospel with people tools of how to disciple tools of how to how church comes together so lot there are going to be lots of different tools over the next couple of days so um, there, was, uh, there was one that I saw it was from a movie but it, was, it gave a perfect example uh huh three boys and everything and this guy named Jonathan Ferry okay and he's sitting there and he goes okay I, uh, there's like a cake and they're all like oh man we're going to have a cake you know and everything oh no 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 okay what I did is I placed out three notes in three different locations you find the note you follow the directions and then you come back and then you get your reward okay and everything so you put the Bible in practice and everything so the first kid went out found the note followed the directions came back got his reward you know it's all happy the second person found the note he couldn't follow the directions so he got lost okay the second person went out to where the note was supposed to be but he couldn't find it and everything, so he got lost. So two people that came back and they, and they see the kid, and he's like, man, that's not fair. And so he's like, well, if you had the knowledge and if you had the training and everything, and all of this is in the Bible. Uh -huh. You know, the Bible teaches you everything Good. you need. And if you if, if, you, if you follow the directions, and you, would you get your just reward you need? Yeah. And stuff like that. So <laughs> the person who knew that found the, the, the note and then uh, followed the directions, you represent the people that heard about Jesus and heard about the Bible. You're the one that found the note but couldn't understand the directions. You heard about Jesus, but you never went to church. Mm. And then mm. the one you went out there, you represent all the ones that never heard about Jesus. Right, yeah. That's good. That's and good. I was like, shocked. I was like, wow, I learned more out of that than I ever did. <laughs> it's amazing how analogies, yeah. Analogies help you know, us out so much. If you ever get a chance, watch the movie. It's called Jonathan, Secrets of Jonathan's Berry. I've heard of that. It's but, good. Uh, he, he, he gives off a lot of examples. Good. You know, how to deal good. With yeah, it makes me makes me think of like it's not like one or the other is what's important. It's not like oh, just knowledge is what we need, or just tools, or just skills. We really need both, um, and hopefully we're, we're going to gain both while we're here. But I want you to think of the the, the skills or, or the or, or the many tools we're going to give you, and we're going to be practicing a lot and getting lots of reps in. And as I was saying, some of you are on this end of like I've done it a bunch, and some of you are going to be on the end of here. I I don't know a single tool that you're talking about, Justin, uh, and it's going to be brand new. And then many of you are in between. And so I just, as you're going, going in the next three days, there's going to be a lot, or there's going to be a lot of sitting down sometimes like this. Feel free to get up and stretch or whatever. But there's going to be a lot of times where it's just going to be you at your table talking or you with a buddy. Um, and it, we'll probably say a lot of times, hey, grab your buddy or grab a partner or grab someone next to you and practice this skill. Just like Burke said, hey, grab someone and share, share um, uh, the two things to share. And uh, we're going to do that a lot and thinking through because, we, again, we don't want to just kind of hear things and let it move on. We, want to, we don't want to just be hearers of the word, we want to be doers of the word. And I think the same thing, we want to be doing these things. So, um, um, so here's what I want you to do right now. Grab a buddy, grab someone next to you, uh, whoever's going to be your buddy for this next few minutes. And I want you to answer two questions with, with each other. Um, what are you hoping, uh, you know, you probably heard some things about this project so far, or Link, or Boot Camp, or um, yeah, I think my kids asked me, they're like, what is boot camp? Like, what are we going to exactly? Um, so some of you may have no clue why you're here, or, what, or maybe, hopefully you know why you're here, but exactly <laughs> what the next three days are going to feel. Some of you, again, have been here before, and, and hopefully you're looking, you're all here because you want to be here. We didn't make anyone come. Um, and I didn't make my kids come. They all begged me for a while. Um, maybe, no, I don't know. I think you're all here because you want to be here. So, um, so why are you here? What is this something you're hoping to get out of the next three days? Not just Link, but the next, the boot camp time. What is something you're hoping to learn? Um, okay, good. So what, what, one is what do you want to learn? And then the other question I want you to think about is think about where you're, where you're, where you're serving, maybe your church or your hometown is, and think about lostness. Think about people in your town uh, and how many people live in your town. How many people in your town are far from God? Are the people that, that need to, to hear the good news of Jesus. So think those two things. Uh, grab your buddy and share what's one thing you're looking forward to. And then think about your town. And I want you to really look up. What, one thing I want you to look up is how many people are, are from where you live. Uh, when, maybe it's your college, your city, your hometown. If you're not sure, maybe it's a place you hope to go to one day to take the gospel. And I want you to get that number for me. If you have to look it up or whatever, go ahead and look that up. So uh, take three minutes to do that. That's all you get. Ready? Go. Your buddy is hoping to learn. Not you, but what are some things your your buddy, your friend, your partner, your person next to you hoping to learn? We're hoping to learn how to be a master vision caster. Uh, Great. Good. Good. I hope you learn that too. I hope to learn that. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, he said he's looking to be more uh, refreshed, and he hadn't been in been the one in a couple years. Yes, and he was forced to be here, huh? That's what that's what he's looking forward to. <laughs> no, nah, he needs to be refreshed. In. Refreshed. He's looking forward to be refreshed. Okay, good. Adam is looking forward to building some some passion and some zeal. Okay. For implementing these things. Good. It's passion, zeal, good. Jordan is looking for how to see movement happen. Okay, movement. What do you mean by movement? Like uh, fourth generation. Okay. Good. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that in a couple of days. But yeah, <laughs> how do we see this? How do we see what we're talking about explode and, and and go just beyond us? So we'll actually talk about movement here in about five minutes. What else, your buddy, want to learn? Anyone else want to learn anything? No. Okay. Good. Take on, not just for the summer, beyond. Good. All right. Tell me about your your where you're from or the places that, when you think of lostness, when you think of people who are far from God. Uh, what what are the areas that you guys are come come to mind to you and uh, number of people there? College campuses. So what's college campus for you? FSU. FSU. How many people are there? Do you know? <laughs> how how many people total? <laughs> no. Okay. How many people in FSU? Forty thousand FSU. That's so that's the campus. Good. What else comes to mind? Okay. Good. City of Tallahassee has 190,000. 190,000 in City of Tallahassee. Wow, is that small? Gainesville. No, Gainesville's more actually. 250,000. Yeah, Gainesville's 250,000. The Gainesville metropolitan area. Charlotte, 1.2 million. One point. Okay. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> cool. You got a different number? <laughs> no. Huh? Government, okay. So the pockets, uh, great. So, so we all have a different area we're thinking about. And I, if you look at your papers, if you want to flip to one of those pages, I wrote brutal facts and envision. I'm not going to hit all those, but there's some facts about lostness out there. How does that, when, when you think about that, um, uh, uh, number of people out there, there's some facts you can read or whatnot, but there's some, some ones that, to me, that jump out at me. Um, and it's the, the 60% number, and I think it's on there. Yeah, it says 60% of lost are not interested in attending church. 60% of the people who, who, who aren't Christians, who aren't believers, are not interested in attending a, a typical church uh, that we think of in America. Um, do you guys feel like that number is accurate? Do you feel like it's higher or lower? I feel like it's a little higher. Think about higher, more people are not interested, okay? Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Higher? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. But yeah, in, in America today, uh, and we're talking about thinking of America, less and less people are interested in going to church uh, than it was years ago. And that number is increasing as time goes on. Um, uh, so that's one fact that jumps out to me. But the other one that jumps out to me, and this, the, the, the book says 7 out of 10. But the number that, uh, that I've, I've heard and seen in, in facts is 73%. 73% of, of the people who, are, who don't go to church are willing to study the Bible with someone or willing to talk about Jesus with somebody. Um, so to me, that there's, that those numbers are helpful to know because we've got to do something different than what, what, what's been done in the past, really. Uh, it's just typical church that we see out there. Um, and, uh, and that's a lot what we're going to talk about is, hey, is there something a little, a different way we can reach lostness out there? And that's some of the things we're going to talk about over the next couple of days. Um, but here's what I want you to do. Take your area, uh, wherever your area is, and just a little thing to kind of feed the fire of, uh, of thinking about lostness, thinking about people who are far from God. So I'm just taking the Gainesville area, the Gainesville, uh, and this isn't just the city, but in Gainesville, the population is 250,000 in the Gainesville metropolitan area. I think in the city alone it's 130, but in the Gainesville metropolitan area is the, the fact that uh, if you type it up, that's what it is. Lee's not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced either, but that's what, I, that's what the facts say. So, um, all right. And so how many of these people, not all of them are, are, um, are lost. Not all of them don't know Jesus. Uh, the, the, the fact for Florida, the stat for Florida is 89%. Uh, it's probably higher in some places. Um, that are, are not, uh, not believers, and it's probably lower in some others. So, but I'm just going to go with the Florida fact. This is, by, this is from the Southern Baptist Convention. 89% in Florida are lost. So what's 89% of 250,000? Uh, 
I wrote it down. Nobody, nobody can do that in their head? Come on. No. It's 222,500, okay? 222,500 are lost in Florida. Or not in Florida, in, um, in Gainesville. Thank you, in Gainesville. Okay, so, so this is the population that needs to hear Jesus. And out of that, we're saying 70, uh, 60% of them won't, won't ever attend a church. They aren't even interested in church. Uh, but again, 73% of them are, are, would be willing to study the Bible with you, would be willing to talk about Jesus. Um, so they say out there, if you can reach 10%, if you can reach 10% uh, of a population, 10% of a group or whatever, they can reach themselves within. They can reach the rest of the group. So what's 10% of this 220,500? It's not that hard. What is it? Yeah, it's 22,250. Just move the decimal place, one place. Over. All right, so if you can, so this is the kind of the target. If we can reach this many people and train them to reach their uh, peers, reach others, they can reach the whole all of Gainesville. That's the idea there, right? Okay? So let me give you another number here. Uh, typical church size. Who knows what a typical average church size is? Actually, I'm What's the, what's, the, what's the number? Average church in America? 78. It's average church in America is 64 people, actually. Yeah. There's some mega churches out there, and there's some, a lot of small churches out there. So average church in America is 64. All right, so how many churches is this? 22,500, or 250, sorry. How many churches would that be? If a typical church is 64 people and all of them are in church, how many churches would that be? 352. 352, thank you. So that's 300. So we're going to need 352 churches to get 10% of the lost population in Gainesville. You guys with me so far? Does that number make sense? Okay. In the traditional church model, uh, a church plant, starting a traditional church is kind of a typical Sunday service, big setup model and there's nothing wrong with that it's not a wrong model but in that typical model they say the average church plant costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so a new church you guys hear that number it's like whoa all right so if it's two hundred fifty thousand that's really sloppy um two hundred fifty thousand dollars how much money would it cost to have 352 churches You never really needed a church in the first place. Right, right. That's what you're, that's where we're getting. 88 million. Yeah. 250k. How much money do I need? 88 million dollars. All right. Who's ready to reach floor? Uh, reach Gainesville. Um, so I throw this out there again. This is just this is just averages and generics, and not all church plants take 250 thousand dollars, but but the average. It would take $88 million to reach Gainesville. Um, and that's just to reach 10% of Gainesville, who hopefully will reach the rest. Um, so here's what I want you to do real quick. Do, do your city. Go ahead and do your city real quick, right next to my brutal facts. Just write your city down and run through those numbers real quick. Um, just to, just to, just to uh, give a perspective here. Um, so do your population. And then if you don't know what lo how many lost people are in your town or whatever, you just do the 89% number. You can use that. $1 million to reach Greensboro. <laughs> Only 66 million to reach Tallahassee. Great. What else? What other cities we got? Locations. Charlotte, you guys figured out? A lot. Okay. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot. <coughs> um, Who's got another city for me? Clemson. Clemson. What's it cost to reach Clemson? Oh, I didn't figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two billion to reach Atlanta. Atlanta. Wow, two billion to reach Atlanta. Yeah. Good luck, Andy Stanley. It's a, it's a billion for Charlotte. A billion for Charlotte. Good. So, hey, I just wanted to throw this out. This is a, this is very average. This is not the only way and things like that. But I wanted to come across and say it's gonna. The traditional model is is not gonna work. We God owns a lot. Actually, He owns it all. <laughs> He's got all the resources. But not all those resources seem to be being funneled towards church planning, let's just say. Um, so we need to do something different, especially since 70 or 60% of those people won't even come to that type of church. 60% won't even attend, aren't, aren't even interested in coming out of that type of church. So over the next couple of days, our, 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 we want to roll out as a different way maybe to do church, simple way to do church. And again, I don't want you to think that traditional way is bad. 
because they're doing great. They're doing a lot of things, but it's not going to reach the whole segment. If God's heart is for everybody in Charlotte, if God's heart is for everybody in Tallahassee, everybody in Greensboro, we're going to need, we're going to do something more as God's people. And, um, one, one example, one model I'll give you. We've seen, how many people have seen the high five model that we're about to do? Um, probably seen it before. So let me take Joshua. Come here. Come on up, Joshua. You want to help? No? Abigail, come on up. Okay. Abigail, come on up. See, my kids, if you, the Abigail, Joshua, and Rebecca, they came to, to learn and be with you guys for a couple of days. So, all right. So, um, Abigail is, uh, she's a super evangelist. And she's going to go out and share the gospel with many people here. And how she's going to share the gospel is she's going to give them a high five. And so I'm going to give her, um, I'm going to give her, how much time you need to share the gospel with everyone here, you think? Um, I'm going to give you 20 seconds. I am so <laughs> All right. No. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. That's fine. She can, she's pretty good. Hold on. 20 seconds. If she gives you a high five, uh, go ahead and stand up. Uh, 20 seconds might be too long. <laughs> All right, ready, go. Over here, over here. Over here. Oh, 20 seconds too long. I'm only going to give her 10 seconds. All right, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Come on up here, Abigail. Keep stay standing. All right. Abigail did a great job, super evangelist. How many people? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. She led 17 people to the Lord. In 10 seconds. And 10 seconds. She's great. All right. But Abigail went to Link Boot Camp 2018. And she learned it's not just about how many people you can share the gospel with, but it's how many people can I multiply my life into theirs so they can multiply their life into others. So she's going to go and share the gospel with them, give them a high five. And that person, in turn, has learned to share the gospel themselves and going to pass it on to others. So then they are able to give a high five to others as well. So if she gives you a high five, then you get up and start giving high fives uh, to others as well. And we'll see how many people can be reached. 10 seconds. You ready? Mm -hmm. Go. All right, stop. 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 All right, stand up if you got high fived. <laughs> great, most people. We forgot two people, three people. Okay, great. All right, go ahead and sit down, sit down, sit down. What? You can go back to your seat, thank you. Give Abigail a hand. So I share that because, again, I think it's probably not new to a lot of you, but what we want to see is we want to pass on these skills and this training. Uh, not just so we can go out and share the gospel and see people get saved and, and, and entered into the kingdom and be part of what we're doing. But we want to see them be able to do it with others. And we're going to pass on. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says, um, The things you've heard and seen in me, and trust, oh wait, yeah. <laughs> thank you. The things you've heard and seen in me, and trust these to the faithful men who will be able to share with others. Paraphrased. Uh, <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll hit it again a couple of times. But the idea is you're going to pass on what you've, what, what you've been taught to you, what share with you, and pass on to others who will then pass on to others, uh, who will pass on to others, who will then pass on to others. And in that, in that verse, you see four generations. And we'll, we'll talk about that some more. But, but that's our hope uh, through this next couple of days is you, you catch that idea of multiplication and that we can, this is possible, to reach all of Gainesville, to reach all of Charlotte. It's possible uh, if, we, if we grow in this, just for this little room um, of people, just this, to, to the idea of multiplication and passing that on. So... Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps you and kind of gives you a little motivation uh, as we attack, uh, as we know God's heart and want to reach the world. So go ahead and grab your buddy again and share one thing that kind of jumped out at you in the last 15 minutes or so. One thing that maybe you shared or whatever, and then JD will come up and, and we'll start looking at scripture and God's plan for, for how to accomplish this. So go ahead. So share one thing and we'll jump back in. <laughs> 